Hi! Welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 10. It is Sunday, October 12th, and uh, it is kind of a cool, uh, rainy day, and I just thought that I would do a podcast. I cannot believe I'm all the way up to 10. Um, I When I started this approximately 10 weeks ago, I didn't think it would go this long. Um, I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry and Fluffy Kira on Twitter and Instagram. I blog over at the corner of Knit and Tea, which is where all the show notes will be for this episode. And I also have a yarn shop, a uh, Etsy shop for my hand spun yarn. That's the Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn, and all of those links will be over at the show notes. So welcome back! I, like I said, I really didn't think I'd make it to episode 10, but I'm so excited that I have, and I want to thank all of you for joining me along the way. Uh, last I checked, I'm up to, I think, between 175 and 180 subscribers, which is fabulous, and I know that there are many of you out there who don't subscribe through the YouTube channel, but who do watch, so thank you all for watching. Um, I will be uh, keeping an eye on the numbers, and there will be another giveaway when we hit 250. Um, and the other question that I had for my viewers, and please feel free to leave feedback here or at the corner of Knit and Tea, is I've been toying with the idea of starting a Ravelry group. Um, I don't have one yet, but I was thinking perhaps when I hit 250 I might be starting one. Um, and so I wanted to hear whether you thought that would be a good idea, whether you'd like a place to congregate and talk about what you're knitting and what you're sipping and what you're spinning and the episodes. Um, so if so, leave me a comment and I will definitely be thinking about that in the next couple weeks because I expect that we'll be hitting 250 very shortly. And I do, like I said, I am going to do another giveaway when that time comes. And I was thinking maybe some hand spun yarn. So we'll see how that goes. But, um... But I thought I'd start with that. So it's been kind of an exciting week here. I actually have gotten a ton of knitting and spinning done because I've been watching baseball. And most of you who know me or um, anyone who is getting to know me will know that this is actually super abnormal for me. Um, I always joke that um, my family was born without a sports gene. None of us play sports. Uh, none of us really watch sports. It's just not a thing in my family. So, um, but I live in Kansas City, and what's been very exciting is that the Kansas City Royals uh, have gotten into the playoffs in baseball, which is something that hasn't happened in 29 years. Um, they were up in a wild card game, which was last week, and uh, they were victorious in that, which means that they went to, oh... See, now I'm not even going to be able to tell you because I don't know enough. They played the Angels, and they swept uh, three games out of five. So uh, they went ahead and moved to the next level, which means now they are in American League, I believe. And they're playing against the Orioles. And so far, they are 2-0. and um, They need to do best four of seven. And they have been playing in Baltimore, but they're coming back to Kansas City this week. And I have to tell you, this is something that has just completely energized the city. Um, they've turned the fountains blue for the Royals. Um, everybody is just super excited because this hasn't happened in almost three decades. So, um, and I watched the wild card game and uh, the last several games have gone into extra innings and um, have been real close. They've been tied until one team edges ahead. And in this case, it's been the Royals almost every time. Um, and so I watched the wild card game and then I turned to my husband and said, you know, you're in trouble because now I'm in it till they're out. So we've been watching and listening to a lot of baseball, which means a lot of knitting time for me. So totally abnormal for me, but what I've been up to this last uh, week or two, and you'll get to see the products of that in just a little bit. So today, um, because it's cold, I am sipping. I am sipping hot uh, pumpkin spice from the Republic of Tea. It is a flavored black tea, and it came in the most recent Republic of Tea catalog as a free sample, so I thought I would try that today. And I am sipping in my Greenbridge pottery mug. It's a cute little sheepy. They had tons of these mugs. Um, I bought this at Maryland Sheep and Wool when I was there this year. And actually, I have a little card. They have an online shop as well. And I will put this in the show notes. It's Greenbridge Pottery. They're a potter out of Maryland. And they are online at greenbridgepottery.com. And I believe they have an Etsy shop. So I will put the links in the notes. But they have all these great mugs with all kinds of different animals on them 
them, um, quite a few sheep, and this is actually the first time I'm using this mug. I did almost two cups of water and it is not full. So this is a huge mug and I'm reminded of that poster. I like big mugs and I cannot lie. I do love big mugs. I know the tea gets cooler faster, but um, I love them and I particularly love in the winter to hold them in my hands, warm my hands. Um, I like not having to get up and refill even if it does get cooler. Um, I'm just a total fan. So. That is very nice. It's a very um, subtle pumpkin flavor over black tea. Um, my favorite pumpkin tea so far is Celestial Seasonings Sweet Harvest Pumpkin. Um, and I bought a couple cases, a uh, couple boxes of that last year and I'm still using them. Um, but I, I am a fan of the fall blends and pumpkin is one of those. So um, I will definitely say this is, this is a good sip and all of these will be in the show notes. So that brings me to knitting, what I've been doing this week. Um, as you remember, in my last podcast, I talked about how I had just had a conversation with my sister, and she had requested some hats for my niece. They live in Chicago, so it gets super cold, snowy, icy in the winter. Um, and my poor niece will not tolerate anything on her head right now. She will be one at the end of the month. And she just does not like wearing hats, and that's kind of not an option in Chicago. So my sister asked me to uh, make a few hats that would tie, that they could tie on or strap on so that she will not be able to pull them off. Um, so the first one, I, I went looking at some patterns online um, on Ravelry and just kind of browsed to see what I wanted to do. I figured I was going to make some ear flap hats um, because those are generally great for tying under the chin. And I had a couple other ideas and I managed to finish two this week. So the first one that I did was the ear flap hat. It's by Jane Richmond. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. Ravelry. And wavel well, we. And I used some of my hand spun. Um, it is one of the skeins that I replied earlier. It was pastels, and it's a superwash merino. And um, it's an ear flap hat with a really big pom pom on top. And um, as part of this, I ordered a pom pom maker, which I didn't bring in with me today, but I'll show you next week. Um, I ordered a new pom pom maker. And I might have gotten a little zealous on the pom-pom maker. It's, uh, I think the phrase I used last night, an overly aggressive pom-pom. So this is the little hat, and I think the pom-pom might actually be almost bigger than the hat itself. And I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to trim it down or whether I'm just going to leave it as is and maybe let my sister trim it down if she wants to. But it is this cute hat out of my hand spun. It's pinks and grays and purples, um, and it's got the little ear flaps um, to go down over her ears. And then I made just a simple um, braided tassel out of the hand spun so that she can tie it on her head. And so that one is washed and blocked and ready to go. And like I said, I think I got a little over aggressive with the pom-pom, but I love it. And there's nothing cuter than a baby in a pom-pom. And she's not old enough to object to that yet. Um, the other funny thing is, so I make a whole bunch of stuff for my niece. And I always told my sister that the only thing I want in return is I want pictures of my niece wearing things. So once she grows into things and whatnot, my sister always takes pictures and send them, sends them to me. Now, I'm trying to picture how this hat thing is gonna go because she hates hats. So I kind of expect that anytime they put her in any of these hats, she's just gonna throw a temper tantrum. So I'm trying to picture this baby with a screamy face <laughs> in this hat with the enormous pom-pom. And it's kind of cracking me up. So I hope I actually do get one of those. Anyway, that is the first hat. Like I said, a free pattern on, Ra pattern on Ravelry, worsted weight, my hand spun. Um, and even with the overly aggressive pom-pom, I think I probably used about 100 yards of yarn for this one. So that's number one. Number two is the Aviatrix hat, and that is by Justine Turner. That is also a free pattern on Ravelry. And this one is really cute. It's a hat done with short rows. And so it kind of cradles the head, and then you do a chin strap with a button. So I just, and this is out of um, Huckleberry Knits. It's Casca, uh, the yarn name is Cascara. It is a um, worsted merino cashmere nylon. So it's absolutely wonderful to feel. And it's in burgundies and greens and blues. And the colorway is called Lady Mary from Downton Abbey. 
So I am just uh, super pleased. I decided to try a slightly different style and see what would happen. Um, and we'll have to see um, what my sister and Roxy think about these. That's hat number two. Um, again, a free pattern. I want to say I made the, it's either the 12 month size or the 6 to 12 month size. That's what I made on all of these. Um, and this one said I used about 65 yards, yards of yarn and a button. So that's that one. So I have another one that I'll start to show you, but it's not a finished object yet. Um, it actually isn't even a cast on object yet. So I thought I would go ahead and um, show you my third FO for the week. And that is I made a few more mini mittens. And as you can see, I'm now to the part in the ball where the colors are a little bit lighter. All of those others have been blacks and blues. And um, these are a lot more pastel colors. So, like I said, everyone's just a little bit different because I don't know where the yarns are. This was the scrappy yarn that I replied um, to make it a little bit tighter. So, yeah, that's those. And I realize I have forgotten a project to bring in, so I won't be able to show you. Um, but I am almost done with the first sock on the um, macaroons. Uh, it is a Desert Vista Dye Works in Viso, and it's the Macaroons colorway. I've got several pictures up on my Instagram this week as I went through it, and thanks to baseball yesterday, I am almost done. Um, I About halfway through, I tried to decide whether I was going to knit myself super crazy knee socks, because um, there's a lot of yarn there, um, or whether I was going to stop a little bit early and make Roxy some matching leggies. And I actually asked on Instagram, and I think it was pretty evenly split. Um, I decided to go ahead and make myself knee socks. I actually have um, about a half a skein left over from, or a little more than half a skein left over from this hat, and I decided I will make her matching worsted leggies uh, for Christmas, because these are actually even close to Christmas colors. Um, so I went ahead and kept going on um, on the knee socks, um, and by next week I will be able to show you the first one finished and probably the second one started. I'm sorry I didn't bring those in today. Um, the next project that I cast on for this week is I cast on for a shawl. Um, this one I, um, it had been in my to knit list for a while, but I saw one just in the last few weeks that was absolutely beautiful, and I decided that I really wanted to make it, and I even had some of a similar, it was the same yarn but in a different colorway, um, and I really, really wanted to do it. It is the Groovy Shawl. And I don't know how well you can see this. It is a shawl. Um, I guess this picture is probably better. It's a shawl knit on the bias, but it ends up forming a triangle. And it's got these alternating sections of um, stockinette and um, reverse stockinette so that it makes it kind of welted. You've got um, just kind of a texture in the pattern. Now, the one I saw that made me really, really, really want to knit this was one that used a gradient yarn, so that you started in one color and subtly all the way at the other end went through to a complete other color. And um, the person used uh, Twisted Fiber Arts, which is known for her evolutions, um, and they used the Aerial uh, Base, which is a superwash merino, it's a fingering base. And um, this one is actually a double Evo, which she does, uh, Evo standing for evolution. It's a double Evo, which was a club colorway, and I bought on D-Stash, and it is called Velvet. And it starts at this kind of creamy yellow and goes into a goldenrod and then a tan and then um, kind of into a purple and a pink and into red and it kind of ends up, it, the monitor is making it a little bit hard to see, but it ends at kind of a pinky red. Um, and so I did some careful thought as to which color I wanted on which end. Um, whichever color you start with, since it's knit on the bias, will be the smaller um, in width section, but the band of color will be longer because you're knitting it over fewer stitches versus when you get to the other end, the rows are super long, so the band of color will be shorter. And I'm not necessarily sure that I did it exactly the right way because I decided to start in the real light color and I think I might have wanted to start in the rose and pink color because I'm less, um, the, the pale color and the goldenrod is a little bit less um, of my colors, like good against my face, 
goes well against my face. Um, so I'm not sure that I selected right, but I already started and I'm not going to worry about it. And this is going to be kind of a long-term project because I have other projects that I'm working on and things that I want to knit. Um, and I suspect it's going to be kind of a boring knit, but, um, but I really want the finished object. So I think that's how I'm going to get through this. Um, and I did the first, let's see, one, one, two, three sections yesterday, and I'm starting on the fourth. And as you can see, it's, I mean, it's really curling. It'll need a good blocking, but you start with stockinette and then you do some reverse stockinette and it, it's almost got a little bit like Hitchhiker, the teeth, where you bind off a few, so stockinette, reverse stockinette, and so on and so forth, and as you can see, it's already growing. It's a bit of a triangle. So that is my groovy shawl, and like I said, Twisted Fiber, Fiber Arts Aerial, the color wave velvet. Um, groovy is a paid-for pattern. It is not free. It's six dollars. Um, and it is living in my new Kicks and Giggles bag. A friend of mine had a bag in this fabric, and as you can see, it says knit one, purl two, cup of tea, resume, break, cup of tea, resume. Um, and given that this is the corner of knit and tea, I thought it was the perfect fabric. I have a friend, Kim, who uh, designs bags. Her shop is called Kicks and Giggles, and I will go ahead and put that in the show notes. Um, and she will do a custom bag where you can order fabric from, I ordered from Spoonflower. Um, and so she went ahead and made up this bag for me. It's a little wedge bag. And actually the other thing that I love is she did little um, red polka dot fabric for the lining to sort of match the red on the outside. It's got um, a zipper pull with a little bead. And then it's also got a little handle um, for going around my wrist if I want to. So new bag very exciting and new project that I'm excited to have finished even if the knitting is a little bit boring so the final thing that I have is the next project that I'm going to cast on and I just thought I'd bring that in here I'm going to make one more hat for Roxy and again this is going to be kind of an ear flap hat um, this is called the I Heart Cables hat and it's by Justina Lurkowska and this is actually also um, a free pattern and it's got some cables and it's right here. As you can see it's a little hat with ear flaps. It's got cables and also a pom-pom and um, I'm just I think it's going to be super cute so I decided to do this one as well. And um, I ordered the pom-pom maker from Lion Brand. I will show you that next week. Um, I really, really like it. The craftsmanship on the tool is not great be because it's from Lion Brand um, and it was not super expensive. Um, but the tool itself is gonna be really useful. So um, I'm excited to have one and it kind of collapses for easy storage. So I will show you that next week. Um, but the I Heart Cables hat is going to be knit in, this is 100% uh, superwash merino from Lion Brand, and um, in this bright green colorway, and I don't think, I think it just has numbers, I don't think it actually tells me what color this is, it was something like, oh, spring leaf, so there you go, spring leaf, so she's gonna have a cute cabled hat. And that will give her three hats for the winter, and I hope some of them will work well. So that is my cast on for this week. I hope by next week I will have that cast off, um, and then I will have one and some odd socks to show you. Um, and then I need to start working on some baby gifts for a friend who is due um, in the next eight to ten weeks. So that will be my next. I need to go buy some stuffing for those. Um, and I already have eyes and nose and um, I will show you the pattern for those next week as I get ready to cast on. So all of that I think is knitting for this week. It, it's kind of crazy. Um, which brings me to spinning. So last week I showed you um, on the bobbin uh, some Australian merino that I was spinning from Skein Yarns and it is um, it was in the colorway meadow and I finished that and it is greens and some teals and some yellows and browns so um, this one is finished. It actually is spoken for, so it will not be going up in the shop because somebody contacted me and asked me if they could have it. 
but it is done and ready to go and I'm happy with it and actually I have another braid of this so um, I could spin up a second braid and I might um, for the shop we'll just have to see I have a couple other things going on so that's the first the second was I showed you a braid with black and blue and white and grays um, and uh, it was from Bee Mice Elf and it was Superwash Merino in the colorway Chili Penguin and I have that on the bobbin now. And actually the bobbin is not the best representation of the color because it's just got all kinds of shades of turquoise and black and white and gray. Um, and so this one will hopefully get plied this evening. There isn't a game this evening, but I'm going to hope to ply it anyway. Um, and this uh, skein will be a little bit bigger than usual. It was tagged as 5.4 ounces of merino, and I don't know if I got all of that because sometimes there's a little bit of waste, um, but I would guess it'll be um, 5 ounces at least. So um, that will be slightly larger than normal, which means it'll probably take me a little longer to ply, but that should be finished and um, going up in the shop this week. Which brings me to what's on deck. Uh, I actually had a customer who bought something from me and who asked if I could do a second skein. And as I talked about a few weeks ago, um, a lot of times I don't have multiple braids. Uh, multiple braids can be dyed at different times, so they can look a little bit different. I can spin them a little bit differently. Anyway, I had someone who said it would be great if you had a second skein of this. So I went out and put um, an In Search Of out on Ravelry, and someone came back and was lovely and de-stashed some fiber to me. So I have another braid of Southern Cross Fiber. This is actually the South African Superfine Merino. It was the other club colorway offering for that month. You've seen me spin, um, it's called uh, Homestead that I called Scallywag multiple times now. This is the other one, which is Heartland, and I called it Brush Me Barnacles. It is kind of a forest green um, and some olive greens and sage and some russets and some gold tones, kind of goldenrod. Um, and it's very, it reminds me of um, not necessarily mesas, but meadows and um, sort of green and yellow grasses. Um, and so I am going to be spinning this up as a custom order for someone this week. So hopefully that will be done by next week or I'll at least have the bobbin to show you. That's what I'll be working on. So um, I realized that I did not talk about what I'm wearing. So even though I'm out of order, I will do that. Um, I call this sweater Nella Paul. Oops, I'm missing a button. Um, it is a mashup of Wanda Nell, which is by Jennifer Hagen, and Polly, which is by Isabel Kramer. Um, I really liked the Wanda Nell pattern. It's a top-down raglan um, with some body shaping. And um, then you can do long sleeves or short sleeves. Um, and I really liked Polly for the striping, but I wasn't as keen on um, the neckline and the way um, the it is also a top down raglan, but I wasn't as keen on the way uh, the top looked. So I went ahead and did a mashup of the two sweaters. Um, they are both free, so I could do that. And the yarn is um, the Sanguine Griffin. These are the... Um, the Sanguine Griffin is no longer in business, but this is Bugga. It is um, Merino Cashmere Nylon uh, in sport weight, and it is just luscious, and I love wearing it in the winter. Um, and the colorway is um, the black with little bits of red is Twice Stabbed Lady Beetle. I believe actually it's red with a black wash over it. And then the um, red pinstripes are out of Faithful Beauty. And I got the buttons um, from a seller on um, a seller on Etsy, and as you can see, they match color-wise really, really well. I'm trying to show them to you without pulling my sweater off. They're little like flower buttons, and I just love this. Um, it turns out that I probably knit it a little bit big. I do kind of have a lot of room in it, and it could have been more fitted. But I think it's just a really cozy sweater to throw on. I do wear it to work sometimes, but I really like wearing it with jeans um, just around the house. So um, I have really enjoyed it. And like I said, it's super warm and cozy, particularly on chilly days. 
So that brings me to um, the end of most of the material that I had prepared. I was going to talk about one other thing, which is um, one of the viewers messaged me and asked me how I select projects. Um, like, what project am I going to do next? How do I pick what I want to knit? Um, and so I thought I'd start with, um, first thing is I am a very, very um, overly anxious type A personality, which means I like nothing better than to make lists. And so I have a million books. I go to Michael's or um, uh, Joann's and I look in the, usually Michael's, I look in the dollar bins near the registers and they have all kinds of lined notebooks. Um, and sometimes I go out and I buy a slightly more expensive notebook. And I go in and out of phases with the notebooks, and sometimes I'll rip out all the pages and start over, and I make lists. For instance, a few weeks ago, I went ahead and made a list of all the things that I want to knit right now. And it's a list of the pattern with a lot of the yarn that I already have, and I would just need to purchase it and then knit. Um, as you can see, then I add other things in down at the bottom as they come up. So the way I select my knitting projects is a little bit haphazard. I would say it is either based on inspiration, and inspiration can be seeing someone else's project, um, because oftentimes I'll look at a pattern and think, maybe not, um, and then I will see somebody else make a project with that pattern and I'll think, oh yes, I need that. Um, sometimes I will see a pattern that I love, that I really want to make, Sometimes I will um, find a yarn or purchase a yarn or dig through my stash and remember that I have a yarn and start looking at the other projects made in that yarn and I will find something that I want to knit. Um, sometimes it's driven by season. Right now I really want to knit warm cozy things because we're going into the fall and I'm anticipating a cold winter and wanting to wrap myself up in everything. So um, on my list I have one, two, three, um, three, possibly four sweaters. I have one, two, three, four, four scarves or shawls that I want to make. And I won't get all of these done this winter. Some of them I'll fall in love with and fall out of love with. Um, but like for this, I went ahead and made a list of the things that I even have yarn for already in my stash. So if I'm kind of at a loss as to what to pick up next, um, I have things here that I could knit. So mostly I'm affected by inspiration from those variety of sources and it's a little haphazard and every so often I see something and I need to knit it now, which is kind of what happened with Groovy. I saw um, someone post a picture a few weeks ago of a beautiful one done in a gradient and I was like, I have to do this, I have to do this, I need to slot this into my craft time wherever. Um, and so I started it this week. My rule was, my, my personal goal was that I wanted to finish two of the three hats before I cast on something new. Um, I also, I'm in a D&D &D group. We play Dungeons and Dragons once a month and we met yesterday and I need, I always need a simple project to knit around the table um, because I can't sit for four hours and not knit, but I also don't want to be looking at a pattern the whole time. So that was one of those um, that qualified. The second way that I choose my projects is some combination of inspiration and need, which is my sister asked for me to make a few hats for Roxy. I had already sort of slotted some time in to knit her a birthday present, and it was just a question of what I was going to knit her. So I went and looked at a bunch of patterns, and I looked at my stash, and figured out which yarns I had, and if I needed to buy one. Um, and kind of settled on the three hats that I wanted to knit and made sure I had the yarn and the pom-pom maker and so that's what I've been focusing on for the last week or so. Um, coming up, like I said, I have some baby gifts and I've been mulling over what exactly I want to make. Do I want to make sweaters? Do I want to make hats? Do I want to make stuffed animals? Um, and the inspiration for the stuffed animals actually came from another podcast that I watch. Um, uh, Amanda over at Not Another Podcast, she's also wit and so nitpicky on various media sources. Um, she posted a really, really cute stuffed animal and I was like, oh, I need to do that. That's what I want to make. 
So, I mean, it's a combination, like I said, of need and inspiration. And then, like I said, when I have all these projects in my mind that I'm thinking about things and I don't know what to cast on, or I'm doing projects that I sort of have on deadline, for instance, a birthday gift to do by a certain date or a baby gift to do before the baby is born, um, I kind of slot in the things around it that I want in it for myself, which generally don't have um, much of a deadline in terms of I have to be done with these. Um, so I sort of keep lists that way. Um, the other lists that I keep, this is my show notebook. I try and write down all my notes. I find that when I sit down and take 10 minutes and write down all the different notes about what I'm knitting and what I'm wearing and all the pattern designers and those kinds of things, um, much more often I am able to tell you those things. When I sit down like last week and I have not written everything out, normally I just try and reach for things and I end up looking a little bit looser or like last week I said a little bit of a hot mess. Um, I also keep nicer notebooks as um, journals. I know a lot of people have been talking lately about craft journaling. Um, this actually is my spinning notebook and I have been using this since almost the beginning of 2011 and what I do is I write down what fibers I'm spinning. Um, sometimes if the if the bag has a label and Southern Crest fiber is particularly like this I can pull the label off the bag and put it in there. Um, so that I don't have to transfer who the dyer is, what kind of um, fiber it is, uh, what the name of the colorway is. Um, usually then I spin and then I record um, notes like how did I spin it? Did I spin it as two ply or n ply? Um, when I finish pulling it off the wheel and I wrap it around the nitty naughty, I mark how many wraps I got. Um, later then I measure the loop um, and figure out how many inches the loop is around and then I can multiply that by the number of wraps um, and by two because um, the Nitty Naughty is basically two meters. Um, and so I can get, uh, that's how I can get the length uh, out of it. Um, I also record the weight. Um, even though a fiber comes to me measured at a certain weight, like I said, sometimes their weight, there's a little bit of waste. There can be naps in it. Um, there can be sections that aren't blended as well. Sometimes I do pull things out. So usually um, both before and after I ply, I measure it both in grams and in ounces. Um, so all of these things are things that I keep track of in my notebook. Um, I also... Um, I usually keep track of, this is from 2013, um, this is the list of what I spun during Tour de Fleece. I keep track of what I spun on which days and when I finished it. Um, so this is just, and this is, this is entirely for myself. I do go back sometimes and I look at the notes, um, particularly if I'm getting something ready to sell in the shop, I assimilate all this data together, um, and do all the computations I need to. Um, it's just a notebook in one place that keeps, um, several years of spinning and I am, I am only about, um, I'll say like halfway through the notebook now, probably less than that. So this will last me for a long time time to come. But this just lives next to my spinning wheel and it's the place that I can leave um, all my details on spinning. So for instance, this is the current page. Um, I did Homestead. I did Homestead again. I did the Skein Merino. This is BME Chili Penguin. Um, and I also usually track the dates that I spun it and what number spin it is for the year because I'm kind of trying to keep track of how much I'm spinning per year. So this is just um, the way I choose to do it. There are a lot of people who do craft journals um, for everything they knit. They write down the patterns. They maybe stick in the yarn tag, maybe even a sample of the yarn. Um, I haven't done that with this book. Um, I've thought about doing that sometimes. Some people just use Ravelry. Um, and or other online lists or note-taking apps, which is fine. I tend to actually like to write in notebooks. Some people um, purchase really expensive notebooks and nice pens, and I am not gonna knock that at all, but I change my mind so frequently about which notebook I wanna carry and what I wanna use it for and what pens I want. Um, my latest probably is um, the farm notebook. 
and I call it the farm notebook because on the cover it's just little farm animals that made me laugh and it was a goat eating socks which I just thought was funny. Um, and so I actually have all kinds of different notes in here. I keep to-do lists in here. I keep my Christmas list in here. Um, like what I'm going to make for other people. Um, and then I went and bought, um, jet pens. Um, they are, uh, like a little, uh, skinny felt tip as you can see, and they come in a great variety of colors. And actually, uh, there was an 18 pack on Amazon for $12.99, $14.99. So I keep colored pens and this notebook in my knitting bag uh, or my purse. And then I have it to write something down anytime I see it. Um, so that's that's kind of how I track my projects, how I um, get inspiration and write something down because I want to remember um, either before I'm going to bed or sometime at work. Um, so that's a little bit about my process. I don't know what you do um, and everybody has something different that works for them. So this, this is completely personal, um, but I thought I would answer that question because I got asked um, how I choose what to knit and how I sort of track or do I keep lists or whatever. So that is a little bit of a long episode, but I hope you've enjoyed everything that I've done today. Um, I hope that you're having a good week and that wherever you are, you are uh, getting the weather of your dreams. I am very much enjoying fall. I do know some of you are in very hot areas and are not um, particularly pleased that it is not fall yet. So I wish you a happy fall um, coming. So I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, as I always say, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye!